Well, I become really fascinated with the uh, human phenomenon of self-sabotage. And not only because I left my job in uh, December to become a professional comedian, because at the time, Lehman Brothers seemed so far away. I was like, how can it affect me on Main Street? But then I Google mapped and found out I'm, I live actually very close to Wall Street. And, um, but I become interested in self-sabotage because I recently visited the mecca of self-sabotage, uh, Kinko's. Now, if you've uh, never been there, Kinko's is a place where people turn over original documents that they have worked on for several weeks, perhaps months, over to uh, total uh, unaccountable idiots. And uh, because essentially Kinko's was founded by people who could not uh, produce original ideas or things, so they decided to make their life off of copying others. They're essentially uh, aping the other people in the room. And they always uh, manage to screw it up. And people act surprised when their dreams are crushed by that. But, uh, and uh, it is slightly surprising because when you think about the level of human involvement in making a photocopy, it is astounding that they can screw it up, but they can't. I mean, they're not back there, you know, make, Ill, Gregorian monks Ill, Ill, illuminating a, a manuscript of some kind. They're pressing the big green go button, and yet they somehow manage to screw it up. But the people, I mean, these people are not producing anything. I, their business isn't reproducing. And if there's really one subset of the population I don't want reproducing, it's these staff at Kinko's. <laughs> That's gonna be bad news. But um, Kinko's has recently gotten a competitive edge because they have teamed up with FedEx to make FedEx Kinko's. Um, this edge is much like the edge you would give your child by fostering their creativity through giving them lead-based finger paint. Um, <laughs> This is not going to work out well. Because if there's w one team that I don't want handling my original documents for long transport that I essentially need to absolutely, positively has to be there overnight, uh, it's not Kinko's. Uh, uh, giving it over to them is essentially making them the 21st century equivalent of the messenger pigeon. Which, oh, I want to talk about messenger pigeons because I did some research because, again, unemployed. And so... <laughs> Messenger pigeons, I don't want to compare them to FedEx Kinkos because they're a lot better, truth be told. Back in the day, back in the, in the Middle Ages, if I were an influential wizard or a red-headed prince of some kind, and um, I had an important decree, like, you know, uh, start the war or kill a lot of Protestants or something like this, and I, I, I had to get it to the neighboring kingdom, how, how would I get it there? By the, the noble horse, uh, the loyal footman? No, the, the filthy pigeon was my mode of transportation. I think it was because at the time, uh, pigeons were the closest thing to a griffin they could find, being half bird, half rat. Uh, they really thought it had mythical powers. And no nothing could get in its way except uh, a bridal uh, shower uh, rice, because apparently that's bad for them. But um, they, they got there overnight. They were very dependable. They left de delivery confirmation in the form of shitting on the windowsill. So you could, could see, oh, they, they made three attempts today. Well, that was, I missed them. Hope they're coming back, send it back to the factory. Um, but no, and, and the importance of the messenger pigeon stayed with us for, for centuries afterwards. Do you know that 37 pigeons received medals of honor in World War II for their service? I would have loved to have seen that press conference. It's like all of the five-star generals next to one another, and there's like thousands of veterans yearning for, you know, affirmation of what they've done. It's like, yeah. And they're like, and the bronze star goes to... Private first class, Mr. Featherston. There you are. <laughs> He's on the cover of Life magazine, like in Bird We Trust. <laughs> and um, somewhere along the line, though, the, uh, the pigeon, the mighty pigeon, fell from grace. I think it was a combination of forces, uh, dwindling correspondence in the Amish community, um, <laughs> avian bird flu, uh, increased demand for hot dog meat. It, um, <laughs> It was a combination of factors. And now pigeons are, are where they are today, which frankly, if you look around in the streets of New York and you see pigeons, their behavior makes a lot more sense if you look at them as unemployed postal workers and veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, <laughs> they're aimlessly wandering the streets, losing their feathers, eating out of trash cans, defecating on statues of war heroes. They're really, they got it in spades there. And, uh, but I mean, as, as though the messenger pigeon didn't have enough problems, it's always in competition with its gay brother, Dove. Now, everybody loves Dove and hates pigeon. 
You know, Dove is a magician's assistant. Ooh, look at me go. And what did Pigeon do but risk his life for his country? I can see them at the, at the Audubon 4th of July picnic, and Dove is there talking with all the rest of the birds, and he's like, oh, well, yeah, I was released at Ellen and Portia's ceremony, and then I had to fly to Beijing the next day for the Olympics. It was crazy. Boy, were my wings tired. And Pigeon's like, I fought in Korea! <laughs> but nobody cares, because he's drunk off whatever he was eating in the Sparrows trailer back there. Um, <laughs> Anyway, no, the, uh, the pigeon is rough. I mean, they tried to revive the, the, the messenger pigeon. There was the short-lived messenger pigeon in a bottle phase, um, but they realized that it was more uh, cost-effective to send it without a recently suffocated pigeon inside of the bottle, so that worked. And uh, there was, of course, the instant messenger pigeon. But then they realized that um, thousands of pigeons died when launched at the speed of light through fiber optic cable, and so it was really bad. And so many, so many of them died in vain, too. I mean, imagine getting a, a, a still smoldering pigeon corpse and you unread the message and it says, BRB. <laughs> More like RIP, my little friend. Um, but the instant messenger, uh, instant messenger pigeon noise, I, I think that <laughs> is actually the uh, basis for the Nextel system. Have you seen the push to talk Nextel? The <laughs> Imagine thinking that everything that you have to say is so important that it can be both preceded and followed by the noise. Wouldn't that be annoying? I yeah, I think it would be. Um, but these people who use it, they just, they use movie theaters, Greyhound buses, they, they don't care where they do it. I think, if I may make a small analogy, I think that using uh, Nextel is like uh, how asparagus makes your urine smell like asparagus. Um, because you need one gene to produce the smelly urine and one gene to smell it. So for Nextel, you need, you need one gene to realize that other people can hear your speaker phone and one gene to care about it, because that's, that's what they're missing. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, uh, to go back to Kinko's for just a second, I think that uh, Kinko, we shouldn't blame it for any of its faults, because really, they're being honest that they're going to screw it up. The place is called Kinko's. Does everyone know what a kink is? When you say you have a kink in the plans, it means you have a, a flaw or a mistake of some kind. It's essentially called Problemos is the name of the store. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be uh, handing over my original manuscript to a shop called Foo Cups. It's like, <laughs> hi, I'm just, just here to pick up my uh, document. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a little foo cup with that. We ended up losing it. So that's fine. All right, thanks everybody. Bye.